Good evening, families. I'm very happy to finally be able to come out to you with this vlog about what Arlington or what Gibbs is specifically going to be looking like beyond May 4th. I was hoping to share this out by Wednesday, but we were really waiting for the superintendent to come out to the district. Uh, it was important for her to be able to do that before principals came out with a little bit more of a granular plan at each school. And so I'm really happy to be able to come to you tonight and let you know what is gonna be happening once Monday rolls around. I know this feels there's a sense of urgency here for sure. Believe me, there's a sense of urgency for me too, um, wanting to get you this information and get this information out to your sixth graders. And I will be doing that a little a little later. Following this message out to you, I will be sending a message out to students uh, with an activity to build some schedules. And so that will be going out today too. I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm gonna get rid of my face, however, because that will interfere with the presentation. And so I want you to be able to see all of the different parts for sure. Beyond May 4th, the schedule and cur curriculum details at Gibbs. So the key points beginning on May 4th, which is Monday, um, are around new curriculum concepts, trimester three subjects, art, tech, and DML, at new schedules with synchronous and asynchronous learning opportunities, and you will need to know that students will be receiving an M, a P, or U on assignments and as an indicator of progress for May and June, the end of the school year. So I'll, I'll dive into those each one of those bullets a little further. The Department of Ed has given us uh, priority standards around new curriculum concepts. So what that means is May 4th, the curriculum will be new. It will no, no longer be review or what we've been calling enrichment. Uh, it will be based on these priority standards at every grade level. You can see what those are at the Department of Education website. So I've put that up here if you wanted to, to take that down. Um, but really what I'm gonna tell you this evening is what you'll need to know for your sixth grader. Curriculum directors in Arlington right now are working with teachers to identify those focus areas. And that's what they've been doing all week. So you know, once Monday comes, they'll, they'll have decided you know, which folk, which, what they're gonna focus on in each one of the areas. And then teachers are also planning lessons to present to students in a variety of ways. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Trimester three subjects and, and, and new schedules will be necessary. So children will be very excited that they are going to be able to experience either art, DML, or technology, whichever one they have not yet gotten to take a look at. And we will be sending out new schedule templates that include those subject areas. Um, I do have one to show you here in just a moment, and the students will be able to build their schedules so that they'll know what they're doing every day of the week for the month of May and the month of June. Uh, the schedules you will see are going to represent synchronous and asynchronous opportunities for learning. So I talked about this before, but I'll, I'll let you know that one of the hardest things about this was to make sure that we were being equitable. And that was the debate between that synchronous or um, times when student must be present to experience the learning and asynchronous lessons that student can a student could access at any time so you'll see well you'll you will see we have balanced this for students and families the asynchronous opportunities will be that as we roll out these new concepts and skill building for students the, we're providing as much content as we can through teaching videos and so teachers will be making these videos and sending them out to students to watch once, twice, three times, as many times as they need to in order to really understand the new concept being taught. Um, following, they're going to have an activity then that would help them practice and learn the concept. The videos will be released by 9 a.m. each day and the curriculum schedule release will stay the same. And as you remember, that looks like this. So we're, for, we're, kids are in a routine and we are not going to change that routine. What will change though, is for example, on Thursday, there will be an ancient civilization teaching video and a world language teaching video for students to watch. And it will be that new content. The synchronous opportunities, the ones that are going to be timed is that each day those videos are sent out, they're going to be followed with office hours. 
Many teachers will choose to hold hangouts with their students and they will answer questions, they will reteach, they will repeat the model of the content. It might be done through a Google chat or emails, emails as well, but as stated above, most teachers will choose to run hangouts and are being encouraged to run hangouts and those office hours would match the content area so as i said to you on thursday out will come the ancient civilization video and the world language video and then they'll be followed up by synchronous office hours in addition to those synchronous office hours on the day content is released the whole entire school will also be holding additional office hours for those videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m., all of Gibbs will be in office hours. Students will be able to email their teachers, any one of their teachers, during those time frames. So if they're working along an activity and they find they have a question, they can plan to use this time to reach out to teachers and get an immediate answer. S students will need new schedules. And the reason that they are going to be needing new schedules is because there's lots of synchronous times they need to know about. So I, as I said, I created a tutorial video for students to create their schedules and they'll actually be able to fill in the synchronous office hours and understand that the videos they will be receiving should be watched before they attend those hangouts or office hours. Um, they're going to learn about the additional opportunities to check in with teachers during all school office hours. And I would like to show you that student schedule template. So instead of navigating away from this, I will come back to the slideshow. I'm gonna show you what the template looks like now. Up here at the top is the master schedule. So what students will see is all of the sections and when they will meet. Now they do not need to meet, this is very overwhelming here. They do not need to meet at all these times. What they will be able to do is take the template below, which is pre-loaded with math, ELA, science, and ancient civilizations. That's going to be the same for everybody, by learning community, of course. And then they're going to answer these questions at the top about when they had facts, when they were in school, when they had PE, and so on and so forth. That will be the key for them to check out, okay, so if I had, facts on a D, E, or F day, this is when the office hours are. Oh, that's me. I'm going to go fill that into my schedule. They simply copy this block and they paste it down into their schedule. By the time they are finished with that, this activity, they will have their complete schedule of everything that they need in order to attend school Monday through Friday. So it is the intent then for them to be completing this activity um, before Monday, of course, of next week. But because I'm releasing it tomorrow, it will be the topic in advisory on Friday and students will be able to get questions answered from their advisory teacher if they're having a hard time. Of course, you've already seen this slide. So we'll go on to the next, holding students accountable. Um, we will be giving a different kind of feedback to students on their weekly assignments. It's no longer just going to be suggestions about the deeper learning. Um, we finished trimester one and two, and kids had time to for makeup. So those grades in power school are complete and stand. And then for May and June, we'll be holding students accountable with a rubric. We want students to know that they will be earning either an M, a P, or a U for May and June. The M stands for meeting. The P stands for partial, and the U stands for unable to determine, and I'll explain those a little bit now. All students will be moving to seventh grade, so you need to know that as parents. We do want them to move on with a little bit of data to the next year's teacher, and so we will be communicating the progress made in term, trimester one and two, as well as May and June. The assignments that students complete each week, teachers are going to be keeping track of and giving feedback. Each department area will be more specific with students about what that means for these assignments, but the underpinnings are that an M would mean high participation and work that shows understanding. 
A P would mean some participation in work that shows some understanding. And a U would mean that a teacher could not comment because of lack of participation. Now, of course, we want everyone to participate and we'll do the very best we can to make sure that those students that seem to be earning U's in the very first week of this that we're reaching out to and, and giving support to those students. If you remember in my scheduling vlog, I talked about the importance of blocks. So when I first taught them how to build a schedule, we talked about these blocks. And when I tell them about this new phase, I will be clear that half of the three hours of academics will be taken up by the video lessons and the office hours for that day. So that's half of their academic three hour academic block. The other hour and a half would be working on the assignments for the day, any other assignments they have not yet finished and reading for 30 minutes. So this gives you an overview of what you will be seeing kids working on this particular week, maybe even over the weekend if they choose to, but really it's something they'll probably be able to get done in a short amount of time and with assistance from their advisor. Um, I'm hoping that this helps you to understand the plan moving forward. And this is also in a lot of ways asynchronous because you can watch it as many times as you need to. Um, and I hope you do. I hope it's helpful. Um, as I said, I wish I could have gotten this out to you a little bit earlier, but here it is now. And I feel really confident in the plan that we have for students for May and June to get some new content out to them in asynchronous and synchronous ways. So please reach out with any questions that you might have. And I look forward to working with your students as we build the schedule for May 4th and beyond. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching.